Welcome to the Deliciously Simple Food Channel. I'm Shelly, and I would love it if you came and cooked with me today. Come on! Hi, and a very warm welcome back to the kitchen. Today we're going to make the classic Trini meal. We're going to make a split pea and chickpea curry and we're going to make a callaloo. So we're going to make them separately in this video. I'll talk about the split pea and chickpea curry first and then we're going to talk about to the callaloo and make the callaloo and make the chickpeas together. Now this meal here brings back memories for me. I remember when my mom wasn't working because she's a nurse, when she wasn't working on a Sunday, she would get up early and start to prepare all this food. So by the time I woke up, I woke up to the house smelling like food, but I couldn't eat anything. I couldn't eat anything until every single piece of that meal was done. And it's usually we're waiting for the curry goat or we're waiting for some kind of meat to be prepared. And it's not just for the meat to be prepared and finished. She used to say, well, it has to dry down. And I always used to think this is like an exercise in torture. The food's done, but we need to wait an extra 15 minutes for it to dry down. For what purpose? I don't know. But since this is a plant-based channel here and I no longer eat meat, uh, I'm going to show you how to make the split pea and chickpea curry. And I'm also going to show you how to make the callaloo, but it's going to be a little bit of a Canadian style callaloo rather than a Trin Trinidadian style callaloo. So let's get started and talk about all the things that's going to go into this. Because I'm not going to lie, if you make these two things today, like I'm going to make today, it's going to take you a long time because you're going to have to cut up all those vegetables. You're going to have to put it all in here. It's going to take a long time, but the good thing about it is that you can make them in batches. I always make my meals in batches and then I can freeze some and then whenever I want it, I can take it out again. So I probably make callaloo probably once every three or four months and I freeze some and every time I need a little bit of callaloo or I need a little bit of this and that, I take it out, I put it together, I warm it up and I have this fantastic meal. So I always make my meals in batches for that particular purpose. So if that helps you a little bit make this meal because you know that you can make it in batches and freeze it, then I'm happy. So let's get started into what's in the ingredients here. So the first thing we have is we have two 400 milliliter cans of coconut milk or two and a half cups of coconut milk. Then we have the split peas. I have one and a half cup of split peas that I've washed and drained. I have the chickpeas. I have two cans of chickpeas, um, so two 540 milliliter cans of chickpeas, or you can just um, have you know one large 940 milliliter can of chickpeas. Then I have one and a half peppers. I use yellow peppers and red peppers today. I have one and a half Roma tomatoes. You can use one really large tomato or 10 cherry tomatoes. Really doesn't matter in this particular recipe. Then I have my own curry mix. Then we got some ginger, garlic. We also have a little bit of um, cabbage and we have some onions that we need to chop up today as well. Now, I normally make this in one pot. So I normally call this a one pot meal and I'll put it over there in my instant pot and I'll use the pot from the instant pot itself so I can just put it in one pot, cook it in one pot, everything in one pot. But for today, for the, you know, the video that we're doing today, I'll use this big giant bowl here that I have and we're going to make sure that we put everything in the bowl so you can see it mixed up, so you can see what it's going to look like before we put it in the pot to cook. So let's get started. One of the things I didn't talk about was the spices. We're going to be using a lot of spices for this dish. But with the spices, we're going to leave to the end. I'm going to put it in as I put in all the rest of the ingredients in the pot. And then we're going to sort of mix it up as we go along. The first thing we're going to do to get started is deal with some of the vegetables that I haven't chopped up in front of me. We're going to chop that up. We're going to start to put everything in this bowl. And then we're gonna then transfer, mix it all up with the spices and then transfer it into the Instant Pot. And so let me get started chopping this um, cabbage here and we'll talk more about the chickpea and the split peas. Now the chickpea and the split pea curry that we're gonna do here 
is excellent. You could eat it on its own. You could uh, eat it with rice. You can add some potatoes in there and you can have it kind of like as a stew. So it's, it's so versatile that you can eat it and use it in so many different things. You don't necessarily have to um, eat it with any particular thing. You can actually even put it in a wrap and have it sort of as a sandwich. Uh, it's fantastic. So as I chop up this, this cabbage here in front of me, um, the cabbage I normally put in because I love the, the good gut health that cabbage promotes. You don't have to put cabbage. And again, if there's anything in here that you, know, you don't like, you don't have to put it in here either. So I've got some cabbage in here. I've got you know, a big piece of ginger that I'm gonna peel. And once we peel it, I'm gonna then grate the ginger and put it in here. Now that, that this ginger adds um, that flavor profile that you need in most curry dishes. If you try to cook some curry dishes without garlic and without ginger, you'll soon realize something's missing. So this ginger, you can put as much or as little ginger as you like. My ginger piece here that I have is about, you know, two thumb width thick. Um, so, you know, use your thumbs and say, okay, this is about two thumbs thick and grate the ginger and put it in here. And I normally use fresh ginger for this because I find that when you're, when you're cooking curries, you normally want to use fresh ingredients when you're cooking your curries. You want to use fresh ingredients in all your curry dishes because if you don't, you'll notice it. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add the cloves of garlic in here. I have six cloves of garlic and you're probably thinking, Shelly, that's a lot of garlic and it is. However, the split peas is really going to soak up that garlic and the chickpeas is really gonna soak up that garlic. So even though I put a lot of garlic in, you're not gonna notice the garlic at all. And as I do this, everything's starting to run. My eyes are starting to water a little bit, my nose are starting to run, but that's what you do when you're cooking Caribbean style. Everything starts to sort of, you know, run. So if you see me, you know, stopping to blow my nose, that's, that's just par for the course here when you're cooking a Caribbean meal. So, in addition to you know the ginger and the garlic, we're gonna have a ton of other spices like I mentioned earlier to add to this dish. And we're gonna make sure that those spices really blend well together. You don't wanna you know, add spices in here that this spice is overpowering that spice or anything. The thing about cooking a curry meal is that everything sort of blends really, really well together. And so the last thing I gotta chop up is the onions here. Notice that I'm chopping up these things, you know, quite large. You don't need to sort of chop them up small or make them super, super tiny or anything like that. Totally up to you. I know that sometimes I chop certain things up really tiny if I don't really like that vegetable, but I have to eat it. So I'll chop it up nice and small. But in this case, you know, everything that I'm putting in here, I kind of like. I like onions, I like garlic, I like ginger, I like cabbage. So I don't want to sort of hide these vegetables in the dish. I want them to have sort of their own flavor profiles and I want, I want you to know what you're eating. So, you know, that's what I love about this type of food and also foods from a bunch of different countries as well. I find is that when you travel the world and you eat food from different cultures and different countries, the meals, you can actually see what's in the meals. You can see the vegetables, you can see what's in there. And so that's what I love and so that's what I do. So I'm gonna put these onions in here into the big bowl that we have and then I'm gonna put the rest of the ingredients and talk about the rest of the ingredients as well. So I'm just gonna wash my hands here because I've already got ginger and garlic all over my hands and and that is actually causing my eyes to water. So I wanna make sure that I don't chop the ginger, chop the garlic, and then touch my eyes with it and stuff. So, yeah. So the next thing I wanna talk about as we put all these ingredients is the little bit of ingredients that you'll, you'll find that is a little bit different than normal. So I have my own curry powder mix. 
Now, your curry powder might be like sort of Jamaican style where it's really, really yellow, or you can have sort of like an Indian style curry where you have more of the turmeric in there and a mix of the paprika in there. So yours might look a little bit of a yellowy reddish. Um, mine, I have a dark curry because I've mixed my curry with a few different spices. Now, if you don't have different spices that you can go into curry, no big deal. Just buy the curry powder and put it in here. Whatever curry powder you have is going to work really, really well. Now, I have two tablespoons of curry in here. And so I'm just going to sprinkle it around in here. In addition to the two tablespoons of curry, I have one and a half Roma tomatoes, as I mentioned. Now, you can use one really large tomato, but this is what I had. So I had one and a half Roma tomatoes in here. I have one full yellow pepper that I chopped up, and I chopped these up a little bit small. I have half of a red pepper that I've chopped up as well, and that's gonna go in here. And in addition to that, I have one and a half cups of split peas. Now, my split peas, as you can see, it's, it's starting to get hard in here. This is what happens when you wash your split peas and you let it dry. It sort of turns a little bit hard, but that's no problem. Just get it out of the, the bowl here and put it into your big pot, or you can sort of wash the chickpeas right away um, when you're making this. So, you know, in all intents and purposes, probably don't do what I did was wash it and just leave it, let it sit, but actually, you know, wash it as you're gonna use it because once these sort of stick together, it's kind of hard to get them out, but it's gonna be fine when you put it into the pot and when you cook it, it's gonna sort of like break apart again. But it's just for me right now, I'm having a hard time putting mine because I let mine sit here as I was prepping for this video. Now, the next thing that we're gonna add in here is our chickpeas. So we just finished putting the split peas. We're gonna add our chickpeas. I've already washed and drained these, but just left them in the can here. And we're gonna put two cans of chickpeas. And notice how the pot, the bowl is already full. The bowl's so full of things right now. And it didn't seem like we put in a tremendous amount of things, but the vegetables take up a lot, but vegetables are bulky. So they take up a lot of room in your bowl, whatever you're gonna do. Now, the last bit of ingredients are the spices. Now, it's a tablespoon of everything. I've got some pink Himalayan salt here. So I've got a tablespoon of pink Himalayan salt that I'm just gonna throw here. In addition to the pink Himalayan salt, and I'm just gonna get a little bit more paper towel so I can sort of wipe that so I don't transfer salt into my other spices and have that as I go along here. And the next thing we have is cumin seeds. So I have also a tablespoon of cumin seeds that I sprinkle around. The next thing we have is thyme. Thyme seasoning, just dried thyme. And it's also a tablespoon of that. And I'm gonna throw that in here as well. Now you can't really cook curry without thyme. And if somebody tells you you can cook curry without thyme, when you taste it, you'll notice. Now, black, black pepper, I've got also a tablespoon of black pepper here as well, which is great. And I'm gonna sort of wipe this black pepper off because I don't want it to be in the other spices that I'm gonna have here. I have a tablespoon of turmeric. Ah, uh, sorry, no, a tablespoon of paprika. I have a tablespoon of paprika here. My apologies. And I also have here a tablespoon of cumin. Uh, coriander, sorry, coriander. I'm getting my spices mixed up all over the place here. So I have a tablespoon of coriander because we already had the cumin seeds. So a tablespoon of coriander. And if you're wondering about the recipe, I'll place the links for this recipe and the Kalaloot in the description below of this video. So. All of my spices are in there. And the last ingredient that I need to add to this curry chickpeas and split peas is the actual coconut milk. Now I use two cans of coconut milk 
540 milliliters, no, no, 400 milliliters of coconut milk, I believe it is. Um, it turns out to be about two and a half cups of um, two and a half, yeah, two and a half cups of coconut milk that we're gonna put in here. And so I'm just gonna put this coconut milk here, everything from the can I'm putting in here. And now that I have all of this in this bowl, I'm gonna bring it down into the bowl, mix it up so you can see what it looks like, and then we're gonna put it in the Instant Pot and get it started. Now, this seems super, super simple, and the first part of this split pea and Kalaloo video, the split peas doesn't take a tremendous amount of time, and if you put it into one pot, it's good. What's gonna take you a long time, though, is the Kalaloo. So we'll get started on making that as soon as I mix this up and put that in here. So let's bring it down so you can see me mix this up. And then from there, we're gonna get this started and then get started on the Kalaloo. Now look at this curry dish here. So you can see everything's been mixed together. It has a nice sort of, you know, curry look to it already right away. One of the first things I wanna tell you about cooking with curry is make sure that you don't get any curry all over your clothes. So if you can wear an apron or wear black or wear something, make sure you don't get that curry on your clothes because it stains and it's really, really hard to get out. But look at this meal. Look how it looks when you mix it up, how everything sort of blends together. The spices look like it blends together. And trust me, when you take this out and you eat it, ah, oh, it tastes fantastic. Now let's get this into the Instant Pot and let's get this started. Now it's gonna take about 45 minutes or so, I believe, um, to cook this uh, chickpea and split pea curry in the Instant Pot because I'm gonna set it on a, a pre-setting, a stew setting. And because the, the split peas is still raw and still hard, it needs some time to cook. So it's gonna take about 45 minutes to cook in the Instant Pot on the stew setting. Now, the split pea curry is in the Instant Pot behind me, and that's going, and now it's time to make the Kalaloo. Now, the Kalaloo has a bunch of different ingredients, all that we have to chop up, but the great thing about the Kalaloo is that you don't have to chop it up in really, really small pieces. You can chop it up in larger chunks and put it in the pot, and at some point, once everything is boiled and soft and and really malleable, we're gonna blend everything together. So I title this sort of a, a Canadian style Kalaloo because normally Trinidad style Kalaloo is made with dashing bush. And dashing bush is a tropical plant that grows in sort of swampy, wet conditions. And you normally make it with sort of a Trinidadian Caribbean style pumpkin. I live in the middle of Alberta. I'm not gonna get dashing bush anywhere or tropical, uh, pumpkin anywhere. So in order to make this Kalaloo, I substitute it with spinach. Now, spinach can be used along with um, collard greens. I sometimes use a mix, of, a mix of both, but again, like being here in Alberta in the middle of winter, sometimes you may not be able to find collard greens, and so you're able to find spinach. Now today, I have you know, one kilogram of spinach, and I'm not gonna use all of it. I might use about, you know, three quarters of it, maybe a little bit more than three quarters of the spinach today. But if you can do a mix of spinach and collard greens, maybe about 700 grams of spinach and about a bushel of collard greens, that will work well too. Instead of the Caribbean style pumpkin, we're using the traditional butternut squash here. And this is a fantastic squash. You can see the color is super, super vibrant. And that's what we're gonna substitute um, in place of dashing bush and the pumpkin. We're gonna substitute it with spinach today and we're gonna substitute with squash today. But pretty much everything else is the same with the exception of the coconut milk. Now, the coconut milk, I've got two cans of coconut milk. My mom used to actually get real coconuts, crack them open, dig out the, the husks from the coconut, put them in a blender, pour hot water in there, and make her own coconut milk. But thank the Lord for technology, and they put coconut milk in a can. Because if I had to show you how to make coconut milk, 
this meal wasn't getting done today. So we're using two cans of coconut milk, 400 milliliters of coconut milk, and I'm gonna chop everything and put it in the pot. Now, there's no stirring required in here. We're just gonna put it in the pot, put the coconut milk, put it to boil, and let everything boil and really get soft. After that, then we're gonna take it out, blend it, and then we're gonna put it in a, a larger pot in order to cook down, and then we're gonna add our spices to it at the end. So if you don't see me talk about spices now, we're not, we're not done with the spices, we're gonna put spices afterwards. But right now, we're just gonna try to cut up these um, vegetables and put them directly into the pot and then get them to boil in the coconut milk themselves. So normally, this is eaten with rice. Now, I already have rice on the stove right now, boiling, just plain old rice. You can use whatever rice you like. If you like a regular white or brown parboiled rice, go ahead and use that. If you like basmati rice, go ahead and use that. If you even like sticky rice, go ahead and use that too as well. Um, so any kind of rice would work well with this dish. Whatever is your favorite type of rice, go ahead and do it. I've already got the rice you know, boiling in the back of me. What you can't actually experience is the smell. The smell of the chickpea curry in the background, fantastic. And I've got the rice going, and now I'm about to chop up this stuff here. Now, let's bring you in and tell you what's all on this counter here. Now, I mentioned we've got the spinach, we've got your coconut milk, we've got your okra. I have 22 okra here. I have four large carrots. I have a bushel of green onions. You can substitute the green onions for leeks if you prefer leeks better. Um, I've got eight uh, stalks of celery. I have a piece of ginger. I have about seven or eight full cloves of garlic, three white onions, and one butternut squash. And so when I said that this meal takes a bit to prepare, I've prepped some of this stuff already, so that way you don't sort of see the, the down and dirty part of this. So I've prepped it so it looks somewhat you know, good on the, the counter itself. But I'm not gonna lie, it takes a bit of time to prep. And when I talked about making it in batch, here's this pot here. I have a 14 liter pot. And yes, I'm going to fill up this pot and make Kalaloo in this pot. And like I said, the reason why I only make this about once every three or four months is because I have a small family here with me and we don't eat that much Kalaloo all at once. We don't want to eat Kalaloo for the next month. So what I do is I make it in big batches and I freeze some and I leave some so that we can eat right away. And that way I can always take out Kalaloo whenever I want it. And then it's not a big sort of preparation. You know, my mom used to do this on Sundays when she got up and she loved doing it. But I'm sure if she knew my way of freezing, she would do it too. And she's gonna watch this video, so she's gonna be like, no, but she probably will. So <laughs> I'm gonna make sure she watches this video too. So I'm gonna start chopping and then we're gonna start talking about, you know, the various different things and why we're putting some of these things in here. So, you know, in the Caribbean, when we grew up, we ate primarily a plant-based diet but we did have some meat. But when I was growing up, meat was kind of expensive. We had our own chickens, we grew our own chickens, so we didn't eat meat that much. And so what we did in order to get the amount of protein that you needed, you had split peas, you had chickpeas, you know, you had different types of vegetables, and you would make meals like this that encompassed a whole bunch of things, pumpkin and greens and okra and a whole bunch of other things. And so that's what we did. And we turned out to be super, super healthy um, eating that way. And it was a fantastic way to eat. And so I'm just gonna move this to the side so you can see me sort of cutting up the squash here as we go along. Now the squash doesn't need to be chopped up in really, really, you know, small pieces. I just chop it up in larger chunks. And, and that's okay because the squash will will boil down and then they will get um, really mushy. And so it's easy then to sort of um, blend up when it gets mushy like that. And so I have one squash here, butternut squash, that I just use and I chop up and, uh, and I put in here as well. Now, part of this meal is the okra. 
You're probably thinking, why are you using okra? Because okra is so sticky, and when you boil it, it becomes really slimy, and it does. Okra becomes really slimy when you cook it. However, after boiling it, and it becomes slimy, we blend it all together with all the ingredients that you see here. And because of that, you know, it cuts the sliminess, and it's no longer slimy. And you would be surprised that okra can lose its sliminess and it's fantastic. It's a fantastic, you know, vegetarian green meal here. And I gotta tell you, if all you ate was split pea curry along with rice and kalaloo, I guarantee you with the chickpeas and the split peas, you'll have all the protein that you'll need. With the rice, you'll have all the, the starches that you need with all the different vegetables that you see here, plus the vegetables that we put into the split pea uh, curry itself. You'll have all the vitamins and macronutrients that you need and the spices will, will give you that additional nutrients. The only thing you'd need to do is maybe take a multivitamin for your B12. There's no B12 in any of these things that I'm making here today, but um, it just really goes to show that you can make one or two simple dishes and really get all the nutrients that you need. You don't necessarily need to add a whole bunch of other things because civilizations have survived on rice. Civilizations have survived on potatoes. Civilizations has survived on many things primarily that's not meat. And so you can really survive as well. Now this is about a chunk of ginger. It's about two thumb sizes thick or you can have two tablespoons um, of ginger. And I'm just gonna cut this ginger up in quarters and I'm gonna put it in here. Now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven cloves of garlic that I've already sort of shelled and I'm gonna put them in just like that in here with the seven cloves of garlic. The next step that we're gonna do is the onions. Now the onions, you don't have to chop up real small either because like I said, we're gonna blend them. So here's the onions and we're gonna throw them in here just like that. Now the carrots, and the green onions that we're gonna add in here as well. Just give it that sweetness and flavor because spinach along with the okra can be sort of a little bit bitter at times and so the carrots will give it that sweetness and same thing with the squash or if you're using pumpkin in this case, we'll, we'll cut that bitterness and give it a little bit of a sweetness um, to the dish, which is fantastic. But the dish won't be sweet. It won't be a sweet dish, but it won't be bitter either. It will just have this really nice blend of flavors to go along with whatever else you wanna eat it with. Now, I love this meal. I could probably eat this, I would probably say at least a good once a week. I could probably eat this once a week um, because it's so chocked full of different types of nutrients and different types of um, vegetables that you need in here that if I were to stop and think about, ah, I gotta get squash every week, I gotta get carrots every week, I gotta get this every week and that every week. If I were to stop and think about that, it can be quite overwhelming. But with one dish, I can make that happen. And you know, it's, absolutely fantastic. So I love cooking meals that have a variety of vegetables and a variety of nutrients because then I don't have to worry about, oh, I, I didn't get squash this week or I didn't get whatever this week. I can just eat and, and know and, and just know that I've got everything that I need. So this is why I love cooking this meal. Even though it takes long, I try to do it all on one day. And so that way I don't have to do it all again. And talking about doing something on one day, prepping is a vital part of being plant-based. I don't think I could be plant-based if I didn't somewhat prepped a little bit during the week, right? I, I sort of had to have an idea. It's like, okay, I'm gonna need spinach this week. Well, I'm not gonna get spinach that I'm gonna have to, you know, do all this stuff to myself. I'm gonna get the pre-bagged spinach and I'm gonna make spinach that way. If you can get pre-bagged squash or pre-chopped squash, you know, or pre-chopped other vegetables, go ahead and do it. And I often do that. Um, I often get pre-chopped vegetables or I already get 
you know, salad mixes that are already done up for me. So it's, I just have to add my own stuff to the salad mixes and it turns out to be fantastic. And it's, it's a really great time saver. So if you're thinking, oh, well, you know what? I can't be plant-based because, you know, it takes too much time to prep and I'm working and I'm doing that. Well, get the pre-chopped vegetables and prep on the weekend like I'm doing. Like right now, this is a Sunday meal. It's Sunday today. And I'm like prepping my meals up and I'm freezing them. So that way during the week, I can really enjoy the week and I don't have to worry about every day what I'm gonna cook for dinner. So that's uh, just what, what I do here. And uh, as you can see, we're going pretty fast with these vegetables that I've you know, somewhat prepped ahead of time for us here. And uh, we can get these vegetables in the pot. And that's the beauty of prepping. Once you've prepped, Things go pretty fast and pretty quickly, but the prepping does take some time. Now, I mentioned earlier that you can substitute these green onions that I'm about to chop up and you can substitute them with leeks. Yeah, go ahead. I find that leeks provide a really nice mild flavor. The green onions are quite um, strong, uh, but because I'm only using spinach, I do want a little bit of a stronger flavor uh, in the Kalaloo because I'm only using spinach. Now, if I was using a mix of collard greens and spinach, then I would probably chose to use a leek. Um, but whatever you have in your area at your time, uh, go ahead and use that. Because like I said, I'm in the middle of Alberta here and I can't always get the things that, that I need or that I want to make certain, you know, traditional dishes that I like to eat. So, you know, don't fret. If you don't have what you need, just substitute it with something else. And I usually save the okra to last because okra, like I said, is kind of slimy and it slimes up your hands a little bit. And so we're gonna get this okra cut up super quickly here and then get this pot on the stove. While I get the pot on the stove, I believe, let me take a look here. Yeah, I believe the, oh, and there's the beep for the um, curry, the split pea curry. Now the split pea curry is done, and then we're gonna take it out of the pot. We're gonna vent it, then take it out of the pot. And then we're gonna put it in a bowl and set it aside until our Kalaloo is done. And then we're gonna plate up and then we are going to eat. And this will be a fantastic feast. And I'll probably be eating this same meal tomorrow and maybe even Tuesday as well. So, because it's, it's chocked full of so many different, you know, vegetables and nutrients that, hey, if I can eat it for a couple of days, ah, it saves me the hassle of having to think about what I'm gonna make for lunch or dinner because like I said, my family here is, is quite small. It's just the two of us. So I don't, I don't necessarily you know, need to think about all the different things that I need to make, um, you know, to make like three or four or five kids happy. So you know, for me, this, this works out really, really well. So it looks like I've been able to talk this whole time that I've chopped up all my vegetables, which is fantastic. And it makes the time go a little bit quicker for you. And I'm gonna just wash my hands a little bit here to get the sliminess of the okra off my hands. And then the next thing we're gonna do is at this point, we're gonna put the first can of coconut milk in. And so the coconut milk has a little bit of water at the bottom, we're putting that in here. And then we're gonna put the spinach in. And after the spinach, then we're gonna put the second can of coconut milk in there as well. Now the spinach, like I said, is one kilogram bag of spinach. And I'm just gonna put it in this pot and fill it up to the top. Now, you don't have to worry about, um, oh, it's gonna be too, too full, the pot's gonna be too full because everything is really gonna cook down and boil down. And, and like, my, like my mom says, dry down. So everything is gonna be in here and it's gonna cook down really well. So this 
large 14 quart pot will be half full by the time all of this stuff is cooked. And after I put the spinach, that's when we're gonna put the last bit of coconut milk in here. Now, I should talk about the spinach. We have so much spinach in here that you're gonna get your, your vitamin B6 or B12, you're gonna get a ton of iron, you know, so if you're a kind of person that's deficient in iron and the doctor said, hey, you need to eat more iron, well, this is the meal for you. It's full of spinach, so you'll get so much iron, you wouldn't know what to do with it. So, and I'm dropping spinach here as I'm putting it in the pot. And what I'm gonna do is after I put in the coconut milk, then I'll sort of show you what this pot looks like with the spinach on top. And so as you can see, I've used about three quarters and a little bit of my bag of spinach here. I probably just have about a quarter bag left. And the last thing I wanna do before the coconut milk is this bouquet garni. Now this bouquet garni has thyme, marjoram, or majorum, parsley, and bay leaves. Uh, normally I would put bay leaves and thyme in here as well, so that way it sort of boils down at the same time. And I just put a tablespoon in here. And so it, it cooks down and it adds a little bit of spice because thyme takes a long time to cook. So it puts a little spice in here and gets it cooking along with the other ingredients. And the last thing we wanna do is put in the second can of coconut milk. If you find that you don't have enough moisture in this pot to boil stuff down, that's okay. Just add a little bit of water. You can add a little bit more coconut milk if you like, um, but generally I don't add too much coconut milk because you don't want it to be too milky. So. I just usually add two cans of coconut milk and if I need more water in there, I just add plain old water, like a cup or two of plain old water and just let it soak down and let it cook down. So I'm gonna put this on the stove, show you what it looks like, and then we'll get started with taking out our um, split pea curry. So, the callaloo has been boiling for quite some time on the stove. The chickpeas are done and in the bowl here, and as well, the rice is done and in the bowl here. So, what are we gonna need to do for the callaloo that's next? There's two more steps. One is blend all the ingredients in a blender and then put it in a pot and then finally cook that down for like another 15 to 20 minutes. And also add the spices. The spices is pretty much the second step to that. Now, I have a bunch of spices here. I'm gonna go through the spices. Don't think that you have to use all the spices and in the same quantities as I have here. So I generally make a big batch of spices and then I label it and then I label it callaloo. So the next time I make callaloo, sometimes I'll take that same bag and put it in so I don't have to think about it again. But in this particular case, um, I have some of these spices here and some additional spices because the normal ones that I normally use, I ran out of one of them. So I'm gonna put all the spices in here, mix it up, and then I usually just put a little bit, let it sit for a couple of minutes while it's boiling, taste it, okay, I need more spice, put a little bit more, and I put as much or as little spice as I need or want. So don't feel like you have to use all the spices in the quantity that I've put here today. But 
Um, if you're making a really, really big batch, you might need all of these spices in the quantities that I have here today. So let's first talk about the spices. Now I have an all-purpose Irie brand, all-purpose um, seasoning here. Now I love the Irie brand. It's, you know, it's a brand from the Caribbean that I love using and it has everything that I need. And so I have three tablespoons of this that I'm just gonna put in here. Now this is a salted seasoning, so if, if you're you know, leery about using salt, then you don't have to use an all-purpose seasoning with salt. You can add salt separately on your own. Um, the next one is an Irie brand vegetable no salt seasoning. So the Irie vegetable no salt seasoning, I also have three tablespoons of that in here as well. And I'm just gonna wipe this off, give it a little wipe here and there so I can prepare for the next one. Now I have crushed red pepper flakes. I'm only gonna put one tablespoon of this. And the reason why I have crushed red pepper flakes is because I like to use um, uh, an Irie brand spices uh, seasoning. However, I ran out of that Irie brand spices seasoning. So because of that, I'm gonna substitute it with red pepper flakes, two vegetable bouillon cubes, and I have some paprika, and I have some cumin and coriander. And so I believe that this one is the coriander that I have here. Um, let me see here, crushed red pepper flakes, cumin, yeah. So this one is the cumin. I'm only gonna put one tablespoon of cumin as well, including with the red pepper flakes. And the rest of these three here, I'm gonna put two tablespoons. So two tablespoons of paprika. And then two tablespoons of black pepper and two tablespoons of coriander. Two tablespoons. Now, this makes a lot of seasoning, a lot of seasoning. And like I said, I don't often use all of it at the same time, but I make a whole bunch and I make a big batch. And the bigger the batch of Kalaloo that I make, the more of the seasoning that I'm going to use. And so I'm definitely gonna use the two vegetable bouillon cubes, but then I'm also gonna put in the seasoning a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. I shouldn't need any additional salt. However, I did put salt in the recipe for those of you guys who um, might need additional salt in here, but because I use an all-purpose seasoning that is salted, I don't think I'm gonna need to add additional salt in here, but you can if you need to. So this is the spices that's gonna go into the Kalaloo. So the next step in this Kalaloo is let's get you over there. Let's put all of the ingredients that has been boiling for a while into a blender and blend it up. And then we'll put it on the stove and then add our spices to it and that will be the last step. The Kalaloo has been blended and in its final pot. It's gonna be in this pot for about another 15 to 20 minutes to cook down a little bit longer depending on the seasoning that you have. So we're gonna go ahead and put in the seasonings in here and then just let it cook for 15 to 20 more minutes. Let the seasoning soak in, maybe a little bit longer depending on what the seasonings taste like. We wanna make sure that the seasoning doesn't taste grainy in here. So if you need to cook it a little bit longer, like a half an hour, go ahead and do that now. We wanna cook this on a medium heat medium to low heat and you might have to low the heat down a little bit if it starts to splatter too much so i start with a little bit of seasoning in here and i let it cook for five or ten minutes then i come in i take a taste if i need to add more seasonings then i add more seasonings now that we've added our spices in the kalaloo and the kalaloo has been cooking for a while it's going to be done shortly and now we're just going to plate up and take a look at what we have going on here.
Now look at this meal here. Now, if you want something completely balanced, something that you could probably eat for the rest of your life and not eat anything else, this is it. And I've already tasted the chickpeas a little bit when it finished, and it was fantastic. And now, with the chickpeas and split pea curry, along with the kalaloo, along with the rice, let's dig in and take a bite of all three here and all three of them will go well together with the rice. So, you know, don't be afraid to get some kalu, get some chickpeas, get some rice, and see how that tastes there together. This is good. And it's so good. It's so good. And who would have thought spinach with okra, with um, uh, uh, pumpkin or in, in my case squash who would have thought that these would blend so well together but they do they blend so well together they taste amazing and this is why I loved the Sunday meal that my mom always cooked and so here's to you mom but I'm gonna eat all this kalaloo and I'm gonna eat all of this split pea curry by myself all right if you like this episode please give it a thumbs up Please subscribe and uh, click on the notification bell to get notified and we'll see you in the next episode. Ciao!